Chapter 61 Not Everything is Sweet Part 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Posting 5 Parts as a Mini Mass Release Thank you for pushing the book to top 5 Penelope was sure this time that the vampire world was not only heartless but also had stupid ideas of how to live. Keeping their egos and pride while hurting not only the slaves of theirs but also themselves due to the unrequited love they held in one's heart, she didn't understand why one would do it. Life of a human was a short one and though the vampires lived long almost immortal in comparison to the humans whose life was numbered, a vampire should know when to uphold their pride and when to push away. At first, Penny had been furious at the sight she caught sight at the other side of the street to see the vampires hitting the slave in front of everyone where no one stopped the woman from lashing out on her slave, she took it that it was a common occurrence here. But after Damien said what the matter was, though she didn't know how he knew so much by just a glance at them, she felt nothing but pity. The pity wasn't just for the slave who was subjected to the humiliation but also the vampires who was stupid. Ednell.co her eyebrows still furrowed, she wondered why the vampires were like this. They were proud creatures but also stupid in her eyes now. Someone who didn't reason right and clung on to their pride and their status in society. Was this how every vampiress and vampire treated the slaves? Like they were objects and nothing more than that. It shouldn't have come as a surprise to her but Penny had somewhat hoped there was a little difference in the way the slaves were treated but she should have known better. Once a value was placed on the head of the slave, there was no returning back and their entire life which they had led up until then turns to nothing but blankness like it never existed. Her eyes slowly drifted from the front view which she hadn't been looking at clearly to look at the man who had bought her. Young Master Damien Quinn as the household called him, the man wasn't anywhere near young. If he were a human, Penny would have vouched for his age to be around 20.7. Almost a decade older than her but he was a vampire and not a human. And with the little knowledge she had, vampire's age varied in a great difference when it came to humans. Damien as if he only caught her gaze turned to her, giving her a look which was calm and quiet, don't think too much about it, you will hurt your head and lose your sanity, was this his way of telling that there was nothing they could do about it. As crazy as this man was with pulling the blanket away from her body making her climb the tree where she almost hurt herself if he hadn't caught her in time, Master Damien hadn't subjected her to such ill and harsh treatment towards her. Was this normal? Questioned Penelope to herself as she continued to look at him before looking away after she realized she had stared at him for more time than necessary. She tried to understand him this time, trying to pick up his previous behavior with her own knowing how she had behaved with him. From where she stood she was right but was it the same when it came to the world she was put in? What if a few days ago Damien wasn't walking in the market? Penny asked herself the question. What if she was picked by another vampire or vampiress? Would life still be the same? Not able to stop asking the questions to herself she wondered how life would be with another owner. Penny was desperate to escape from where her relatives had dropped and pushed her in. She wanted the freedom of what she was then bend and bow her head to people who in her opinion didn't deserve it. Walking further with Damien, she noticed a store she had seen before. She finally understood why the place felt familiar though she didn't remember why in the beginning. It was because she had seen the same store that was painted dark enough to catch her attention when Damien and she had first met. This place they had come to right after the market she had been sold yet which meant the blank market was somewhere here. Her eyes moved left and right very carefully while her head was bent down slightly to not show disrespect to the other vampires. She wondered how many other poor souls were being sold in the black market right now. On the other side of the Isle Valley was a route that was darker and narrower that looked nothing less to a big cave of walls where the light was shed from the sky that was scarce. The path led to the place which many often went to but didn't speak out openly about. It was the black market, the same market where Penny had been subjected in front of everyone like a showpiece. And just like Penelope, many other men and girls were brought in today to be sold so that the slave establishment could thrive on while also bringing a huge income to the people who ran it. The auctioneer who stood on the high platform where he held a girl who looked absolutely petrified and terrified, 
continued to cry with silent tears that streamed down her face. The auctioneer after what happened last week had a bandage tied around his hand due to the deep wound that had been caused by one of the high dot class pure-blooded vampires whom he couldn't defy. With his good hand, the man named Frank spoke to the crowd, av that I dot r dot g that I dot n like many we have, she has been untouched. Smooth skin which is unblemished with her gold-like hair, he lifted her golden hair up before letting it go, one of our most beautiful girls in the establishment worth every coin you pay, the auctioneer smiled looking at the crowd. 300 gold coins. One of the men in the crowd shouted looking at the girl hungrily. 320 gold coins. Another said. The auctioneer who had his business dot like smile on his face, gave a look of disapproval, I am sure she will be worth your time. I assure you, she has been tested and her cries will send you straight to ecstasy, he provoked the L.U.S. fool men in the crowd. To make sure of it, the auctioneer, pulled her clothes down where the girl only cried harder, P. please, no, she screamed which didn't sit well with the auctioneer. He pushed her forward as the slave girl who was about to be sold held on to the skimpy looking thin material of her dress which was already showcasing enough of her body. 500 gold coins, one man shouted which got everyone murmuring as they wondered if it was going to be a repeat of what took place the previous time in the black market where the highest bidder slave was sold. 510. 570. 620.8 gold coins. Chapter 62. Not everything is sweet. Part 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The count of gold went on when finally a man with blonde hair with gentle appearance was the last one to let the number fall at 890.9 gold coins where no other person dared to increase the gold coins on the slave that was being sold on the stage. As free as the money came to the high society it wasn't the same when it came to the middle and lower class folks. They had to think more than twice and thrice before deciding if the slave was worth it. Of course, there were some idiots who didn't think much about their livelihood but it was only people who belonged to the higher society who could afford to throw away the gold coins without blinking their eyes. The man who bought the slave walked towards the stage and around it so that he could collect his item and hand over the gold coins to complete the transaction. His eyes were bright red in color like many other vampires here where only a few of them had a dark iris of deep red. Walking towards the little tent, he was greeted by the guard before stepping inside to look at the slave he just bought. Dot, Master Robarte. I knew you would like her. The auctioneer spoke to the man who was looking at his slave as if pleased with his selection. Yes, she's lovely. The slave girl who had been sniffing softly after the number of tears that had spilled from her eyes was surprised with the pleasant voice that came out from the man. As if wanting to take a look at the man who had bought her, she looked up at him doubtfully to catch sight of a handsome face with sharp features that had a gentle smile that was on his face. When her eyes met his bright red eyes, he offered her a smile which made her look down immediately. After the torture that took place in the slave establishment and her back that hurt terribly due to the mark which was branded on her, she didn't know what kindness meant right now. I brought the girl you described just like you wanted. I hope you will be pleased with her. Unfortunately, the last one you were looking forward to was sold to another person. Ah, uh, the money, started the man before a bag of gold was pulled up by Robarte's servant. Thank you for your service, the man said. Stepping closer to the girl, he raised the girl's head only to ask, What's your name, girl? His voice was sweet like the berries she often ate, his eyes looking down at her gently. A. N. What a beautiful name you have, said the vampire making her heart flutter at the patience and the sudden kindness that started to invade her, which she had been deprived for weeks now. Though she had been branded before, one of the guardsmen had branded on her back again out of punishment, the thought of it made her cry again in fear. The slave girl named N had a beautiful life before she had been kidnapped and forcibly made to live and know the etiquettes for a slave where her once upon strong will had been twisted and bent to be broken over and over again. Don't cry, he wiped her tears, let's go home now, he smiled before turning around and walking out of the tent. The slave girl followed the man and she was taken to his big mansion which was a beautiful place with a garden that surrounded it with different colors of flowers. 
Master Robarte, the housekeeper of the house bowed his head. Not looking at the slave who the master had bought home, his head was bowed before he took his master's coat. Good afternoon, Miles. I will be resting up in my room today, informed Robarte, his wind chime dot like voice sweet and delicate. And who hadn't raised her head only heard and concentrated on the man's sweet voice that sounded like honey to her own ears. The man was not only polite but also someone who had greeted his servant back. It made her wonder if she had been blessed with the right owner. Maybe if she would ask to be set free in the future he would, thought and to herself. Follow me, Anne, said the vampire who started to walk somewhere. And followed him until they came upon a closed door. Seeing Robarte place his right hand in his pocket as he fished for something in his key, she saw something glitter as he pulled out the key to unlock the door. The girl stood outside the room when the vampire unlocked the room and stepped inside. As if noticing the lack of her presence inside the blonde man turned to look at her where she stood at the door, what are you doing there? Come inside unless you're planning to stand there forever, he smiled before turning around and walking towards his patio as he closed the door. The slave stepped inside to hear the man say, close the door behind you, this made the girl's heart race. Why was he asking her to close the door? Gingerly she turned her body, shutting the door closed which made the sound of click in the quiet room. As the man walked around the room, the slave girl took note of the man who had bought her. Previously she hadn't found the opportunity but right now she could see how handsome the man truly was who had bought her. High cheekbones, strong narrow jaw with eyes that were leaner but wide enough that were prominent on his face. Sit down, she heard him order her looking at the bed and she did as she was told. Happy that her master was kind to her, she obeyed while watching him close the windows of the room one by one which somewhat scratched the back of her mind but she brushed it away. After some time the man came to sit next to her, facing her as he placed one leg on the ground and the other on the bed. He raised his hand to see her flinch, don't be scared, he whispered, even though there was no one to hear them in this closed room. And as if believing him though scared tried to stop herself from shivering when his hand went to pat her head very gently, that's right. Calm down, he smiled at her, there's nothing to worry about. I will take good care of you, he said as his hand smoothed the errant strands of her head as if he were petting a dog. And just as he patted, the girl started to finally calm down, her heart settling in her chest when suddenly she felt her hair being pulled back painful making her wince in pain, M. Master it hurts, she cried when the man pulled her hair with a tight grip and her head fell back. Hurts. What are you talking about? asked the man in confusion, not knowing what the slave was talking about, I am loving you here, so sweetly. Stop crying, he said to her where tears had started to form in her eyes. A single tear escaping from her eyes which turned the man's expression dark. Chapter 63 Not Everything is Sweet Part 3 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. I am being nice, what are you crying for, asked the vampires, his eyes turning to the brightest red out of the sheer excitement. The fear turned the man on more than S.E.X. did, the light in his eyes lit as he watched her squirm and cry, trying to get away from him like an insect trapped in a glass as he watched knowing there was no escape in this cobweb world, shoo, don't cry, he tired to pacifier when his hand hadn't let go of her tangled hair which pulled her scalp painfully, okay, he whispered before letting go of her hair to see the girl move away from him, keeping a distance as her wide brown eyes looked at him. The slave girl didn't know what to make of as her owner apologized, forgive me, said the man as his hand reached towards her but her scalp still hurting, she didn't heed to him and instead leaned back to have the man's eyes narrow at her out of unpleasantness. Suddenly the vampire came at her, his hand wrapping around the girl's neck as he dragged her up to the center of the bed, I told you there's nothing to fear yet you are being difficult with me. The other slaves were so much better who listened, why are you being difficult, Anne? Don't you want to be loved, he asked her with the same sweetness in his voice which now scared the girl on the bed. M. Master, please sp spare me. P. P. Please, pleaded the human girl but her pleas fell on deaf ears as the man was not listening to her. None of her words came to fall on his ear, his eyes looking at her fearful expression. 
His hand was still wrapped around her neck, pushing her to the bed so that she couldn't move her body. As her body started to thrash, his hand tightened around her neck to see the air blocking out of her body slowly. Leaning closer to her face and positioning his lips next to her ears, he whispered, What are you scared of? The slave whined painfully as one of his legs was placed on her arm. More tears slipped past her eyes which only made the man look at her confused as to why she was crying even more, Shu, he patted her head so that she could stop crying after moving his hand away from her neck which stopped him from choking her further, good girl, now don't cry any further. You are to not cry, he repeated his words and the slave beneath him gasped for air, her chest heaving as he played with her hair. The human was more than scared now, did she do something that he didn't like? But she had been quiet and mindful. Not having spoken a word unless asked to. As his hands brushed through her hair, his eyes looking at her with that serene smile, fear came to instill in her eyes. It's time to see if you are as pure as he spoke. Said the man before starting to tear her clothes as she struggled to hide, trying to prevent him from taking the clothes off her body but when she did it only excited the man further. Master no. The girl screamed when she finally did manage to crawl away from the bed, falling down and running towards the bed, she tried to open it but the door never opened as it was locked. The room filled itself with the twisting and turning of the knob, the slave trying to open the door as the vampire came to stand behind her. Where do you think you are going? At the question, the girl's face snapped to look behind at the man fearful who wasn't smiling anymore. Turning back at the door she started to bang it with both her hands. Help. Please, anyone, she hit the wooden door as hard as she could. So noisy, the man sighed. He rubbed his forehead. The girl continued to bang her hand until her own head banged right at the wall next to her. Leaving a trail of blood trickling down the wall. The man looked at the girl who now laid on the floor unmoving. By the heart rate one could say that the girl was still alive. Walking towards the wall, he slipped his finger over the fall and put the bloody tip of his finger into his mouth. Closing his eyes, he relished the taste of it. The girl had survived much to his surprise. Going to the other side of his room and into the bathroom, he pushed the closet which had a lock for it to slide through to allow a passage to be seen. Robarte went back to the girl, dragging her by one foot with little to no effort to take her into the secretive passage which not even his servants were aware of. Once he had tied her legs with the chains, room which had no window and only the light that was the lantern that was lit occasionally, he looked down at the girl. Slaves. They were such beautiful complex creatures, thought the man to himself. All they had to do was accept the fact of their living the slaves he often picked were the ones that were complex in nature, rebellious so that he could enjoy them slowly, torturing them where he could hear them scream over and over again, the echoes ringing through the walls where it was only him, who could hear them and no one else. Before the bid had taken place today, the auctioneer had told him how he had missed another slave who would have been perfect for him. Upon inquiry, he found out that the slave was sold. Not just sold but from what he heard in the crowd who were murmuring in front of him, the slave was sold for a high amount of 5,000 gold coins. It only piqued and irritated him that much more. For a slave to be sold for such value, she must have been worth it. But what Robarte didn't know was if it weren't for Damien Quinn, the girl might have been sold for less than a thousand gold coins. Closing the sliding door of the bathroom. The vampire came to his room to look at the blood that had been smudged on his walls. The scent of it making his head dizzy as he closed and enjoyed the wafting iron dot like smell in his room. Dot. Chapter 64 Master Don't Be Stingy Part 1 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Note Listen to this as you read this and the next chapter Fun 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 Dale. Lucky Star, Damien who had spoken about buying her shoes had instead made her carry the one bag of clothes he had bought for himself. If there was one more thing she noticed when it came to the man who had bought her so happy, he not only bargained on the items he bought but also was extremely picky. Of course, Penny could herself call to be picky if she had the option of money but this man here was far worse than a woman who shopped. 
They had been to more than seven shops and he had made the salesmen and women bring him clothes one after another, spending time looking with an absolute bored look on his face until he found a shirt which he was remotely interested to only drop it. One of the stores had somehow managed to impress him where he finally bought them but not to the value they had put up for. Make it T2 gold coins, said Damien who continued to look at the fabric of the shirt he held in his hand as if he would find a hidden torn hole in the garment if he looked through over and over again. Penny hid her face now because she was the slave who was accompanying her master but because she was embarrassed with the dealing her master did, Master Quinn. This is handmade by and brought from the other land, look at the fabric, we cannot drop the price when the label is of 20.9 gold coins. Don't be a stingy shopkeeper. Damien's eyes narrowed to look at the tag that was on the man's chest, Cordis. Penny's eyes widened at the term used by Damien and if it was allowed the staff in the room would have returned the same expression as hers but they were taught to be polite to their customers and Damien Quim was the customer none would like to lose. Sir, the fabric is created once in every twelve months of the year, the manager of the shop spoke politely. Then you must have kept stock at that time. Drop the price. All right to make it fair, let's bring it up to five gold coins, if Penny didn't know the ridiculous amount of coins he had used to just buy her which he had bargained there too, she would have taken him to a measly vampire. Thinking about the way Master Damien led his life, Penny pondered on how much this man was worth for. With the family mansion that looked nothing less to a king's palace and the architecture around, she could hardly fathom it. And with the amount of money and gold he possessed, she wondered if the man was stingy just for the fun of it. Master Quinn, the store manager gave an awkward smile who was a lower vampire compared to the man who was trying to buy the clothes for lesser than half the price. How cheap are you? Your shop must be making a more than expected revenue here compared to the other shops that are lined here in the same street yet you cannot drop the price for a regular customer. Damien drawled his voice filled with one of disappointment, looking up from the fabric that he threw on the table. Cheap. Thought the store manager, looking at Damien Quinn with a bewildered look on his face now. Did I say something wrong? Damien asked innocently not knowing what wrong he said when he knew quite well what had caused the expression on the man's face. Penny only turned her head down more not wanting to see the witness the embarrassment and awkwardness in the room. Sir, the money goes to the owner and then to fabric maker with which we get little amount from it. A great man like you shouldn't be worried about money, Damien nodded his head. Ednell.co, you are right. How about all of you come to work in my mansion from tomorrow? There is paintwork and some mowing to be done in the garden. One of the people in my mansion pulled out my good plants, hearing this penny closed her eyes. Please, God, don't bring me in the conversation, prayed Penny to herself. The storeman somehow managed to smile and then said, how about twenty gold coins, sir, he saw the pure-blooded vampire twist his lips thoughtfully who finally nodded to their relief. All right. Twenty doesn't sound that bad. Hack it. Said Damien, pulling out the gold coins as he counted them before pushing it on the table towards the man. Please pack this, the storeman said to one of his helpers who got to work of folding the shirt and place it in a bag. Penny who was still looking at the table where Damien continued to pull out the coins to place it on the table wondered what he was up to until she heard him say, this is your tip, Damien pulled out one little penny which only meager village men would have. To think that Damien carried it around him, Penny was gobsmacked and her eyebrows had gone up to her hairline until she began to count the coins on the table. One, two, three point eight and nine dot in a brown colored penny. Damien said, I am being generous and giving you a large tip. Make sure you use it wisely. The storeman had a similar expression as hers, she blinked twice before looking up at Damien. She didn't know if she was to laugh or not for the store's plight. We are very happy for your generosity. Take this mouse. And Penny moved forward to take hold of the next bag she was carried. After all Master Damien didn't like heavy things on his hand while he was walking. Bowing her head to the people in the store who had put up with her master while it somewhere made her smile, she followed Damien out of the store who had a serious expression until a chuckle escaped from his lips. Chapter 65 Master Don't Be Stingy 
Part 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio. It has been a while since I last haggled around, he said in mirth before saying, let's go to the next store, it felt like he was in the mood to bully every store person today, you haven't spoken much, he noted without sparing her a look as he gave a nod to a man who must have been an acquaintance of his, still thinking about what happened. I thought it would have disappeared from your mind. Now that Penny thought about it, she did forget about it and the matter though was a grave one, with Damien's back and forth dropping the price of the items in the store, it had truly taken her mind off. I didn't know if I can or cannot speak, said Penny, carrying the two bags in her hand, following behind him to hear a surprised voice from him, why would you say that? How can you take deprive the fun of the mouse talking, what would I do, asked the man dramatically, don't worry about what happened earlier back there. I would rather have you talk than have a person who nods for everything I say. The mouse would be lost, when he saw her over his shoulder he said, if I wanted someone like that I would have picked one of my maids but I should say they are utterly boring. They are very lively, muttered Penny remembering the time she had a little exchange of words between the maids in the kitchen. What is this hot brewing tea that I smell? I take you spoke to the maids in the mansion. Unfortunately, I never had the pleasure to talk to any of them, which was the truth. Damien preferred his maids to concentrate on their work and if he found them out of line the best was to teach them what they were supposed to do that idle around due to which every maid or servant for the matter did their work to the point, how did you find them? Made friends already. I think I am fine with not knowing them, she answered frankly to see him nod. True. They are thoughtless idiots with empty brains that like to fill their minds with dirt and garbage. It would be better you don't go making friends there, at Damien's words Penny sighed softly. She never planned to. She was a slave or a guest in the mansion for a few days, all she had to do was bear for a few more days or weeks, I often hear how servants quarrel among themselves for the master or mistress's attention. Rest be assured little mouse. This master shall not be moved that easily. You have all my attention. Penny looked sad at that thought. That was something she didn't want from him. Don't look like a wilted flower. Bone Lake has more than needed water to bring the flower back to life. Too much of water is harmful to a plant, Master Damien, Penny and Damien both knew that they weren't speaking about plants or water here but with underlying meanings behind their words. Fret not. I shall be the ground who will drink up all the water, Damien's quick response left Penny speechless as she didn't know how to answer it, let's get this flower some shade, shall we, he said before stopping at a shoe store. Damien walked inside the store while Penny was skeptical if they were going to really buy her shoes. All this time today they had done nothing but look for things for her master which was why she was doubtful as she took steps inside the green painted store. Good afternoon, Mr. Quinn. We are so happy to have you here. A woman greeted the pure-blooded vampire who was checking out shoes that were made for men. The woman was as tall as Damien himself, her figure lean and her brown hair tied behind her back with a loose knot, what kind are you looking for today? Today. Did this man often come to buy shoes? Asked Penny herself. Looking around the store she noticed it was only Damien and her who were present here right now as the only customers that was if Penny could be counted as a customer. Apart from them, it was only the lady and her helper girl who was young who wore a pair of glasses that rested on her face. Good afternoon, Gwyneth, Damien greeted the woman. He tore away his gaze from the showcased shoes that were put up in every single block like in a library, it is not for me but for her. Can you check her size please, the word please coming from his mouth felt more than foreign. Master Damien was polite. The woman named Gwyneth eyes fell on the human girl, her light dot-colored red eyes taking in the human who stood wearing the slave uniform. For Gwyneth, Damien's behavior didn't come out to be a surprise as the pure-blooded man had always been stranger than the rest but nonetheless he was someone she knew for some time now. What kind are you looking for her? The best you have, please take a seat, Gwyneth spoke to Penny who had been standing quiet and awkwardly. Penny had hoped for a pair of decent shoes that she could walk in. If clothes cost in gold coins, she could hardly imagine how much the shoes would be priced here, please, 
guided the woman with her polite manners and words that she had to follow before taking a seat on a plush chair. Penny's feet that dangled with her heels and the back of her feet covered in dirt as she had been walking all over the place bare feet, Gunith who noticed it called her assistant, Maria. Take her to the wash. The assistant nodded her head, and Penny got down to follow the girl to another room leaving Damien and the woman to be alone in the room, you will soon be seen on the newsletter of the town with gossips, hearing this Damien gave her a crooked smile. I don't mind the spotlight. Chapter 66 Pair of Shoes Part 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The assistant took Penny to another room where there was a tub filled with water. It was a room designed very similar to the bathroom except that it wasn't one. The flooring was made of black tiles which were clear enough for one to see their reflection. With a small chair that sat near the tub, the assistant showed her the way before making her sit on the chair. With the slave's uniform that she wore which stopped at the length of her knee right now, she sat awkwardly, making sure her legs were not seen nor the skin above it as the girl sat down, lifting her leg and placing it in the bucket of water. Truth to be told, Penny had prepared herself to see the look of disgust on the store woman or at least the assistant who poured water in the tub where her feet were placed. But the girl's face was blank as a statue as she started to wash her feet. It was obvious that no one would let her step into the pair of new shoes when her feet was dirty. After walking barefoot in the forest where the soil had been wet and slippery, the base of her leg picking up mud and dirt which had also begun to crack slightly, Penny was utterly embarrassed and went to say, I will clean it, bl.net, please miss, sit still, the girl took a stone and started to rub it against her heel with the dried skin peeling before she put it back in the tub, you have been hurt said the assistant after noticing the wound which was in the process of healing. The girl knew there was something strange. For someone who worked with all shapes of feet, she had noticed the little swell around this slave girl's feet. It seemed like the swelling was not inflating but was reducing right now, after she was done with both the legs, the girl washed her feet again as the water turned dirtier and Penny was finally made to step out of it. After pouring cold water on her feet which was later moisturized with some creamy like a white lotion. Feeling her feet to be clean, Penny followed back the assistant to see Damien who was being spoken to by the woman named Gwyneth. The woman took a quick look before giving a look of approval. What kind are you looking for? Gwyneth trailed, waiting for the human slave which Damien had bought to the store. Penelope, answered Penny, her feet clawing the floor after washing her feet. We have various looking shoes, Penelope. Do you have anything on your mind that you are looking for? asked Gwyneth to the human dot like she would ask for any of her customers. Her words were polite and refined as she waited for Penny to answer her. I dot uh. Penny only wanted a decent looking pair of shoes that would protect her from the wet ground of Bone Lake. She had never come in the intention of looking for a variety, which one is the most durable one, she asked making the woman staring at her in wonderment before she let a smile escape from her lips. I assure you every one of them here is durable. If something does break in a month or two's time I will make sure to replace it for you without any extra cost, said the woman. But that wasn't the issue thought Penny to herself. If she would pick to wear a shoe from here, she doubted she would be wearing them at all. For a person who dot belonged to the lowest of the low class in society. Penny until now, all she had done was pick boot which was durable and was of low cost. This lady appeared to be nicer than the others she had come across. The last thing she wanted to encounter right now was Damien having another round of bargain to lower the price of the shoes she would be given from here. There are some showpieces put up there. You might get a fair idea of what you might be looking for. Go on, urged the woman, folding her hands as she looked at the human girl named Penelope turned to look at Mr. Quinn who gave her a nod. No harm in looking, he responded to her, why don't you get them here? Let me pick one of it. Take a seat, Penelope, the woman urged her, walking forward and picking up her hand to lead her to an empty seat. The woman, Gwyneth knew how daunting a place like this or any other store in the Isle Valley could be for a person who didn't belong to this place. The items sold in the Isle Valley were goods of high ends that couldn't be found elsewhere. 
It was a one-dot piece where making another piece again took weeks for it. When another customer came in, pushing the door, Gwyneth excused herself to go to the door. Murmuring something to the mother and daughter duo who had been meaning to come and shop here today. After a few more words, the pair left the store and Gwyneth turned the sign on the door from open to close. Penny was speechless with the way the lady had asked the customers to come later while changing the sign on the door so that no one would come in. Was she not worried about the loss that was going to take place because of Damien's shopping when the man was going to give her less than half the price for the shoe? Or maybe this was one of the places which Damien paid fully and shopped often, thought Penny to herself. The woman gave her a warm smile which appeared to be unharmful but that didn't stop the small frown forming on her forehead. Damien, on the other hand, looked like he hardly cared about it. He was checking out the shoes for men which were made of animal leathered skin, his eyes falling on the maroon-looking shoe with lace that had a crisp dot cross pattern on it. While the assistant had gone to fetch the shoes for Penny from the storage room, Damien asked, when did those come in? It wasn't there a week ago, he inquired. Walking up to the rack to have a closer look at the shoe. They arrived only yesterday, Mr. Quinn. Would you like to try it? Asked Gwyneth. Maybe later, he replied back, turning his body to look at the assistant who handled at least eight boxes in her hand right now. Going to stand right behind Penny, he looked at the boxes that the assistant started to open one after another while looking at the slave girl. Each and every show that was pulled out of the box was beautiful enough to have her gazing down at them in adoration before she mentally shook her head. They were expensive and who knew what Damien would be wanting after he would buy her for it. She couldn't help but think to herself that this was a ploy or he was only going to dangle the shoes in front of her to take it away. Damien turned to look at the vampires and asked, is that all that you have? There must be a few pieces that haven't been opened yet and is in my office. Give me a minute please, the woman excused herself with a polite bow and left the room. Nothing caught your eyes, the question was directed to Penny. Master Damien, Penny turned around to meet Damien's eyes who was standing behind her making her neck ache. He walked around, seeing the shoes that were placed, Master Damien, repeated Penny, I know a shop where I used to live. Aha! Uh -huh. There are shoes that are much suitable for me than the ones that are in here, his gaze finally shifted to look at her, her concerned jade-dot-like eyes. He tilted his head, the shoes in here aren't of your taste. Penny not holding back whispered, I cannot afford it. Who is asking you to pay? My, you were paying. If you told me this earlier there was no reason for me to haggle, Damien's lips twisted before saying, buy what you want to wear. Damien's pet will have excellent shoes. Period. If you aren't going to choose one here, he looked down at her feet, you will only end up stepping on sharp objects and continue to hurt yourself. Chapter 67 Pair of Shoes Part 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The woman was quick as she came out with two boxes in her hand, these came together with the maroon shoes you were looking at, Mr. Quinn, she said, opening the box without waiting for her assistant and getting down in front of Penny which Penny herself found to be odd. Two weeks and people and treated her like a slave without giving her an ounce of respect as an individual person whose freedom didn't exist. In such time, this lady who was looking after the store sat down in front of her without any consideration of her status right now which touched Penny's heart. It was often told that when a person was in the worst state, a helping hand was like a light at the end of the tunnel which not only showed hope but also that there was still a little humanity left even if the creatures were not human. These are crafted by one of the niche cobblers who works in Wovel. He is told to have the hands of God when it comes to making shoes, said Gwyneth before picking a pair of inky blue shoes that were similar to the night sky of midnight. From far one could take its color to be blank but it was just that it was deep blue in color. Taking Penelope's feet, she let her feet slide into the shoe which seemed delicate with the straps that wrapped at the top of her feet. In Penny's eyes, they were beautiful but at the same time, something bothered her. It was the heel of the shoe that was pointy and thin. Gwyneth slipped the other her leg into the shoe, saying, they are called sandals, Penelope. I think they look wonderful on you. What do you think, 
Mr. Quinn. Can you walk? The question was directed to Penny. Penny had the exact same question. Could she walk in these? All this time she had worn flat boots that had no straps or heels on them. While she was looking at her feet on how the shoes looked on her feet she felt something move in the side of her vision. Catching sight of a hand that was waiting for her to catch. Time to walk in it, said Damien making Penny give him a queasy smile which fell immediately as it was put up to only display politeness in front of the people in the store. Placing her hand gingerly in his, she got up from her seat, wobbling slightly before her stance turned sturdy. Okay, thought Penny to herself. This wasn't as difficult as she thought it was to be. Taking a deep breath she took one step forward to smile. See easy, she said it to herself. Taking another step forward she heard the words of encouragement come from the lady in the room, for someone who isn't used to walking in these shoes, you are doing excellent, Penny chest puffed in pride for herself. Who knew she could manage it in her first try without breaking the edges or falling down? And to prick the prideful balloon, Damien commented from behind, what are you a duck to walk so slow? You can walk this slow once you hit 90. Right now you're a young woman. Gwyneth only smiled looking at the look of embarrassment that covered on the girl's cheek. Damien stared at her back and the posture, her stance slightly crooked which made her look worse than an actual duck. You can pack them along with the maroon shoes there, ordered Damien before stating, these will look lovely on Lady Sententia. Pack the lowest pair of shoes so that Penny can use them. Heels please, though Gwyneth gave a look of surprise which was covered in the next second, Penny didn't look least surprised. She knew this bullying master of hers would not hold back and wouldn't lose an opportunity to make her feel bad but she didn't feel bad. She was already getting used to him and was trying to ignore a lot of things when it came to him. Once they had packed the shoes, Penny had bowed her head in greetings of thanks. Though she didn't get the shoes she was expecting which were flat ones which would not only help her walk but also run when the time came, Penny was grateful for the service the lady provided her with her assistance even though she was nothing but a measly slave. While Penny was sent outside to wait for Damien as he had to speak to Gwyneth, the vampire said, the store has been doing well, Mr. Quinn. We had the shoes sent back which were inspected by you last week. That's good to know. I heard there's a cobbler in Valeria. He is as good as the one who had crafted the shoe which you have packed for me today. I will have someone contact the man. Damien shook his head, that won't be necessary. I have asked my cousin to send him over. Having the goods move back and forth is quite a hassle. I would rather like him to work here with the needed specifications of the customers. Is there anything that I need to look at, inquired Gwyneth. No, that will be all. You have been looking after the shop well, the man gave the praise which he didn't give very often. His words stingy just like the money he bargained. Thank you for giving me the responsibility of looking after the store. I will make sure your store turns out to be the best in the Isle Valley, the woman bowed her head and so did the assistant behind her. Dot, I expect nothing less. I shall take my leave, he stated ready to leave when he saw the assistant's expression like she had something to say, what is it? The assistant bowed her head as she said. Um, while I washing her feet I found a wound. Don't concern yourself with that, his words were sharp on her ears. It wasn't because he was angry or trying to be rude but because he didn't like when others tried took interest in what was his. It didn't matter which gender it was. Gwyneth turning around waved her hand so the assistant to step out of the room and give them the space they needed, is she all right? Hmm, Damien answered her with a crisp voice, her feet had an infection. Infection, asked the lady. She had heard of how easy it was for the humans to catch illness who fell sick quickly before passing away. Such was the fragility of humans. Noticing that Mr. Quinn had brought a girl apart from his elder sister to shop here, she wondered if the slave girl was someone special as she had never seen the man with any other slave before. She's fine now. If you're so worried about her, bring her flowers just in case something does happen, Gwyneth returned a stiffened smile at Mr. Quinn's dark humor. Would you want me to send you a pair of flat boots? 
Yes, please, what Damien didn't know was that Penny was sketching her way out for the future by having flat shoes so that she could run quicker than fall flat within ten steps outside the mansion. With the store being his own which he had founded out of his money, it was a secret which not many were aware of. When both Penny and Damien reached the mansion, in the room, the man had finished placing the boxes. Turning to find Penny who sat on the edge of the bed with her shoulders slumped down. Take these, Penny who was sitting idle heard Damien's voice looking up where he stretched his hand towards her with two boxes. Without any questions, she took it from his hand. Opening to see one of them to have a heel while the other one was a pair of flat boots. Was this why he had stayed back? Don't wear them until I tell you to, on his words, she looked up at him wondering why she was not allowed to wear them right away. He let out a yawn, walking around the bed and flopping right on the bed without bothering to remove his shoes. He declared, I am going to take a nap. What was she going to do in the meantime? Chapter 68 Trouble Part 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio she saw him close his eyes, one hand of his placed above his eyes so that the little amount of light that was present in the room would stop falling on his eyes. Penny didn't know what to do now that Damien had gone to take a nap. As she was still standing there with the boxes of shoes which Damien had got for her, she sat down on the ground. Taking one of the boxes and opening it to see the heel like a shoe which was very similar to what the lady had made her wear in the beginning. Though Damien had asked the store woman for a cheap shoe, Penny could tell that this was nowhere to cheap by the looks of it. The shoes looked as good as the other one. Maybe the stores in Owl Valley didn't have any low goods which were affordable for people like her or the lower or the middle dot class people. The question was where and how she was going to make use of it. For a person who had never worn anything like this, she was slightly worried that it would break. Keeping it aside, she opened another box that he had given her. Opening it, she was surprised to see a pair of flat boots that had laces at the center part of each shoe. When she had asked him, he had denied it but in the end, Damien had bought it for her without discussing it with her while she had been waiting outside looking at the people passing by whilst the people gave her looks with their eyes narrowed that looked down at her. Taking her feet that she had hurt which in turn Damien had pierced his nail into where the wound had closed, she looked at it wondering if the wound was still there. With a little circus, she pulled her foot to have a look at the sole of it. Yes, the wound was still there but it appeared to be healing now. Closing the box as she knew she wouldn't be able to wear them not unless her foot healed completely, she pushed the boxes to place them close to the wall. Standing up quietly, she caught sight of the vampire sleeping soundly. Damien's eyes were closed, his pitch-dot-black hair covering his forehead with his chest moving softly up and down as he breathed. Who knew that the immortal creatures could breathe and had a temperature of their own? All this while when she was still living with her relatives, she had falsely gained knowledge that the vampires, as well as the pure-blooded vampires, were cold-dot-blooded creatures in the literal sense. She should have noticed it that day when he had her in his arms sleeping in the early hours of the day. Penny shook her head immediately. Why was she remembering that day? How embarrassing, she said in her mind while wondering what her future husband would say if he found out about it. It was today when he had given her his hand to stand up that she had noticed his warm hand. She looked outside the large window. The sky that had turned dark as the night, with all the climbing and stepping out after a long time, Penny's body felt tired and exhausted. She wondered if it would be alright to take some rest on the bed. With Damien who was sleeping on the other side of the bed, she first stared at the empty space near her but instead of sleeping on the bed. She sat back down on the ground which was carpeted. Leaning her back on the bed, she closed her eyes in the peace and quiet of the room. Damien opened one of his eyes, looking at the reflection in the mirror as the person in the room had stopped moving. Her heartbeat turning steady in a rhythm. Opening both his eyes, he turned his head to find the girl's head resting on the bed as she snoozed in her sleep. Her breathing softly filling the room. The music coming to form that mingled with her and the sound of the breeze and the sea that hit the mansion time after time. He took a closer look at her face which laid half on the bed and a half almost about to slip down but it never did. 
seemed like subconsciously she was still awake. Looking up at the mirror he found it easier to look at her and his eyes zeroed on her face which was relaxed. It seemed like everything had turned out well in the end, thought Damien to himself before his eyes shifted to look at the box that she had moved to the wall, his dear mouse. She came out to be strong but he could tell that with all the walls she had built not letting him crack it open, she had a terribly soft heart which she was sacred. Rolling out of the bed, he took hold of the jacket and stepped out of the room without waking the girl in his room. Damien stepped down the stairs, each and every step of his mimicking like one of the majestic cats in the forest. Licking his lips, he made his way down to find his step-dot-mother and father talking to each other along with his elder sister Maggie. Oh, good you are here, Damien, exclaimed Maggie, we need your help. They actually. How can I be of help, asked Damien. Damien's step-dot-mother was the one who spoke, I believe you know Lady Ursula and also that she has a brother. Yes, Johnny Young, said Damien tilting his head, what did he do? The problem is that he hasn't done anything, said Florence, we have planned to build a family alliance with them. Grace has been trying to influence the man. She has. What happened to the other man she was trying so hard with? The blonde-haired man. What was his name again? The councilman hmm, Damien acted as if he was trying hard to remember the name when he was already aware of what the man's name was. Chapter 69 Trouble Part 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio his sister and father seemed to have no clue as they tried to remember who it was while his step-dot-mother looked away with a sigh of frustration. She answered slowly, Leonard Carmichael. Oh, yes, him. Damien had met and spoken to the man personally during various occasions of their work. He was one of the straightforward men in the council and also a good man who often was found in the company of the current Lord of Bone Lake, what happened to that? Damien poked his nose. Duke Leonard would never fall for his sweet sister Grace. Grace, Maggie and him shared the same father but it was only Maggie and him who shared the same mother. He didn't have to know what happened but if hot tea was spilling so readily who was he to stop it? Instead, he enjoyed his step-dot-mother's unhappy expression. Unfortunately, he didn't seem man enough to woe Grace. She has gone to visit him before the tragic death of his parents. The housekeeper at that time was polite but now they have a new one who doesn't allow guests in. You cannot expect her to wait for him, stated Florence, her white powdered face holding a look of disappointment, it is only right that your father and I find the right suitor. Maggie doesn't want to marry and Grace cannot keep waiting for her older sister to marry. Help your mother and Grace, Damien, his father patted his back. What can I do? Damien tilted his head in slight confusion. Your father sent a letter of proposal. And, he inquired. His father was the one to respond, they said that they are willing to accept the marriage but on the condition that you will marry their daughter. Damien chuckled bringing his hand up to cover the laugh. Clearing his throat, his expression turned serious to give his answer, no. Maggie already knew this was going to happen and her expression remained unchanged but the same couldn't be told about her step-dot-mother who looked as if the word of hope had been pulled from beneath her feet. Dot, what do you mean no? asked Florence with her perfectly furrowed eyebrows. No is a response which equals to be negative that a person is not going to go through it, answered Damien as if the woman had no clue what the word meant. Didn't you gift her address? You even go and spend time with her at her mansion. It doesn't matter if they are humans, we are a progressive pure-blooded family. Damien coughed hearing this, you are progressive only because of the amount of property that is there in their names. If you are looking for a human, I have an excellent candidate and trust me you will love him, his fathering knowing him well sighed. You should ask Grace to work hard to earn the man's heart. For this the vampiress answered back with, she has been working on it. For what? Two weeks. That's not even enough time to know a person either, Damien rolled his eyes, ask her to work harder unless she's incapable. You will have to take a wife in the future. Ursula is a good girl. My wife is something that is concerned with the future. 
We are now in the present, Mother Florence, he used his over sickly tone to emphasize the last two words. Are you saying you won't help your blood sister? Half dot blood, corrected Damien, she was the one who brought it up, he raised his hand looking at the disapproving look his father gave him. She is still your sister. Florence, why don't we wait for Grace to return back, the older man placed his hand on his wife's back, maneuvering her so that there won't be a war in the family. Since the time he had remarried, Damien was the one who took the marriage to be something that was not supposed to happen. He was against it and even though years had passed now, his anger had turned to sarcasm which his current wife was quick to flare up. The man knew that his son would never forgive him. In Damien's eyes, it had been a sign of betrayal to his deceased mother. A sign that he never loved his mother enough and that it had been easy to replace her which was untrue. Damien smiled at his father and the woman as they walked away from them. His sister standing in front of him, how was shopping? Pleasant, came out the crisp answer from his mouth. Looking around the hall which had been decorated he asked, has the preparation been done for next week? Yes, answered Maggie. Herself turning around to look at the decorations, the cards have been sent to the four lands. Relatives and some officials. Hmm, he hummed hearing it. How is Penelope doing? On his sister's inquiry, Damien's eyes shifted from looking at the room back to her with a quirked up smile. She's sleeping. She's hurt her foot. Don't be mean to her, Dammy, said his sister who saw her brother smile further. She didn't want to tell it knowing he would only make things worse but she couldn't help herself but worry about the girl. After what happened to the servant whom she had cared for in the past and what she had done, she didn't want Damien feeling the same guilt out of any carelessness. But then her brother was different, way too different for anyone to figure out that he didn't spare even her when it came to being cruel with his words. But she knew somewhere he had a warm heart that he didn't often show to people. It took more than an eye to see a person's depth of character and unfortunately, he seemed to be the only one good at it. I wasn't. I have been rather nice to her. What made you think so? He gave her an innocent expression that didn't look innocent but mischievous, Maggie wanted to say more but talking right now would lead to a path in which Damien would only get annoyed for bringing something up from the past. I was only guessing. Anyways, did you see Falcon? He asked her. Damien had come down looking for the butler. He should be outside fixing the lights. Thanks, and Damien walked outside the mansion to see Falcon who was standing on the ladder with a big brush in his hand. Swishing his hand back and forth as he hummed something under his breath. In the room, Penny who had a small nap opened her eyes, rubbing her eyes groggily as she lifted her head up to see Damien missing in the room. Looking back at the shoes, like a child, Penny reached out to it and opened the box to have a look at the shoe that was in it. Having never worn something like this before, she hoped to be able to walk in these in the future just like how women had been walking on the streets this noon. But would she be able to take them with her during her escape? Asked Penny to herself. Her eyes moved around before it found a box on the table. With a little more than unnecessary curiosity, Penny stood up. Walking to the table where the box laid closed. It wasn't a cardboard box but an actual metal-like box that appeared to have a latch on it. Wondering what it was, she turned to look at the door which was closed. With her heart beginning to thud in her chest, she raised her hand, hovering it above the latch before pushing the latch open. She looked surprised to look at the little bottles which had watered dot like liquid inside them that were placed snugly in a cushion dot like arrangement. What were these? Asked Penny before picking up one of the bottles in her hand. Bringing it close she looked at the crystal tube and shook it in her hand. Suddenly the liquid like water out of nowhere changed to a color of green. What that just happened she couldn't think more as the glass tube turned hot immediately and broke with a crack, shattering itself leaving Penny wide that eyed in trouble. The knob of the room door turned and her head snapped to look at the door where Damien only had half of his foot inside the room before his eyes narrowed down at her and then the open box. Chapter 70 Black Witches Part 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio 
She looked more than petrified with the way the glass shattered in her hands, its pieces that fell on the floor along with the liquid that had turned from the color of being transparent to a forest dot like deep green after the rain. But that wasn't what got her heart drumming loudly in her chest which she could hear it in both her ears right now. It was one of the many stories she had heard from the village that she came, the drums being hit when a person was going to be sacrificed to the mountain god. Only that right now here she was sure that she was going to be thrown as a sacrifice into the sea by Damien for breaking something she didn't mean to. And though she didn't mean to break anything as it broke shattered by itself, it didn't lessen the fact that she had gone snooping around the room to open a box that was locked securely. Damien who stood at the door didn't look angry but there no hint of his sarcastic smile. Rather he looked very very annoyed, thought Penny in her mind while mentally preparing herself for the worst. The pure-blooded vampire stomped forward and before he could do or tell anything, Penny bowed her head as deep as she could to say quickly, I apologize for the glass. I didn't mean to break it, Master Damien, her voice cracked at the end with worry. His eyes moved from the open box to the floor which had a green liquid spilled around her and the previously clean floor. His eyes narrowed further at the color that was present. Penny hearing nothing from him slowly stood up to see him bend down and sit on his heels as he stared at the green liquid. Damien was sure the liquid wasn't green but had been transparent with the description and the other tubes that laid safely in the box right now. On closer observation, he found something to be odd. Using his hand, he swiped his finger across the green liquid where there were some of the glass pieces resided on the floor. Hot, thought Damien in her mind. Penny saw Damien stand up again, not looking at her but going to the box and lifting one of the colorless tubes that were in there, care to explain what happened here, Penny. Or are you planning to be part of the many statues that have been placed in the garden out here, she heard him, seeing him turn to look at her, do you what these are? Penny shook her head. So you wanted to see what they were? What a curious girl. Haven't you learned that touching another person's belongings without permission is wrong? I apologize, Master Damien. I didn't mean to break it. I was looking at it when it suddenly turned hot and green in color, she explained not meeting his eyes. Damien tilted his head, her words raising his own curiosity and doubts. Penelope didn't seem to be the kind of girl to break things for no reason, at least not in Damien's eyes. If it were Grace or any other vampiress, it would have been easy to take in with the person's action being sufficient. Had his initial suspicion been right? Asked Damien to himself. The box contained newly acquired potions that were stolen from the Black Witches so that it would be tested and seen what it was. The latest news that was making rounds but in a confidential status was that a group of witches was being led by a former witch who hadn't escaped previously. Rioting against the humans as well as targeting on erasing the existence of pure-blooded vampire. But that was all to the new of the witches. Damien was the man from the council who was in charge of finding things from the black market. He was the one who was aware of everything going around in the background of the scenes which was usually hidden by the council in the eye of the public and also sometimes in the eye of the fellow council themselves unless they belonged to the higher level. B. Noel de M. There was a group of witches who were creating an army of witches similar to what had happened when a vampire had started to recruit many humans who were subjected to transform into half vampires, which hadn't gone well. The ignorant vampire did not realize the consequences when he had gone to transform the humans in the entire village, one after another to be killed by one of his very newly created deranged vampires. Humans had the ability to convert themselves to vampires but if the soul and the body couldn't handle the transformation well, the person was equal to be considered as waste on these lands as they posed threat after losing the ability of rationality. Similar to how humans were converted to half-vampires, he had heard of how witches were trying to convert humans to a complete witch so that they could be used to fought and create a riot against the exile that was placed on their sisters and brothers. Do their evil and unfriendly mind, the black witches unlike the white witches who were allowed to be around the people but while also having the council's eyes on their actions, the black witches were driven too far out of the villages and towns that only made the notorious creatures that much eager to attack the people for their own means. Penny who was waiting for Damien to speak saw him raise his hand which had the little glass tube in his hand. 
she didn't know what he was looking for. Did he think she had dropped it for no reason? Penny would have thought several times before going breaking things unless her life wasn't important to her which was for her. Penny's eyes met his dark red brooding eyes, take it, he said with his hand still hanging in midair. 